Hello everybody and welcome to the guide um, how to adjust for elevation 1.0 with me Gold Clutch Tommy and I'm going to go over a, a series of steps or like more or less like four steps in how to improve your game by learning elevation and first before we start with that I want to make a shout out for the wind guide learn the ring system that is on the channel if you do not know how to adjust for the rings then you should not start with learning elevation before you learn that so then you go into the youtube channel and you can find it if you just scroll down a little bit here you have the main page you scroll down a little bit and you can see the wind guide there as a first suggestion there's a 30 minute long video but it's obviously uh, a video that i do uh, do go into more you know details examples so you can learn that very important start there then we go over to elevation the steps that we're going to take in this video is first and foremost that we're going to uh, i'm going to try to show you how to calculate the elevation and what do i do is there a magical formula or you know am i just lucky so i'm gonna go over that as the first step the next step why is that important then why is it important for us to learn how to adjust for elevation and that is something that I do get a question about a lot. And that's going to be an interesting segment in this video. Can you have a different elevation adjustment for the same shot? That's also a step that I'm going to go over. And I'm going to show uh, by explaining using one of the help tools that is out there. So you're going to understand it more properly. Because sometimes there is a shot that works for one person with 20% elevation. But it's the same shot that worked for me with 10% elevation. So we're going to go over that as well. And then last but not least, we're going to go over the fact that how to use that in your game then. Like it's one thing to understand it. But how to uh, put it in your game. How to understand what to do with the information that you're having and that's going to be the final step where i'm also going to show you there will be pictures there will be some videos and make sure that if you do have questions make a comment in the comment section below also you can use the website golfclashtommy.com where you can use the contact form to fill in whatever question you have and we will get back to you helping you out because if this is the first time you're playing with elevation or trying to learn then there will be questions that's not that's not wrong and i rather see you posting 10 questions and even if you feel that the uh, the question is stupid there is only one thing that i want to make very clear before we start going over the steps in this elevation video is that uh, what uphill and downhill means that is something that i'm adding many of the times in my guides that's also something that i'm mentioning in the video guides as well telling you that you should play this one 10 percent extra or 10 percent downhill so we're gonna go over those two real quick if you're going to play uphill that means that the ball is going to be less affected by the wind because it's not in the air as long as it normally would if it would be on the same type of surface so if you're playing uphill the ball is going to be less affected then you need to subtract you need to take away from your adjustment to match the uphill that you're going to play from if you in that way are playing downhill then that's the opposite you're going to have to add to your adjustments you need to add to your regular uh, approach or like regular adjustments so you are compensating for the extra distance or you know less extra the extra adjustment that you need to get so that is very important two of the most you know frequent questions that i'm getting and something that you will hear me talk about in this video as well so to the first step here we're going to go into not that long but we're going to go into how to determine the elevation like how do i know that we're going to play this shot 10 percent or this or that or that or this or that's 20 percent 30 percent etc etc that is because i use i record my shots i do record all of my shots when there is a new course so let's pretend that this course here which is an old course but let's pretend this is a new course for you you have no clue what elevation you're having here or if there even is elevation and because some shots there isn't any elevation and then we need to try this one out and the thing that i do then is that i aim it up 
using the adjustment I believe it's going to be. I don't need to, I don't know that from the start, like as it's a new hole, I have no clue. So then I need to start by just going with what, what I believe in. I aim it up like you can see here on the video and then I take my shot. So if we take up the shot here, you're going to be able to see me aiming it up at the position here. I'm using the spin exactly as I would be doing normal. And now it comes to the most important part and that's why it's very important here to do have uh, to have a recording. Because now we need to try to match up the position where I aim for with where the ball bounces the first time. Because that is what we're adjusting for. We want the ball to bounce the first time at the spot that we initially were aiming for. It's very important that you do hit perfect because if you're not hitting the ball perfect, then it's not going to give you the data that you are looking for. Now, I missed the shot, but that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for the first bounce. So, we're gonna take it up here. We're gonna take uh, away the video. I'm gonna take up the landing point. So, now we're going to mirror, try to compare. Now, this is very hard and you will have to zoom in to really take a look, um, at, at, a look at where the ball did bounce. So, we go back and we look at where we aim. We aim here approximately you know three uh, rings from the rough line and then we take a look at where the ball did land it did land approximately where we wanted to so in this case we can determine that this elevation adjustment that i used here is correct you uh, you can sometimes you'd be fooled by your eyes and that's so to have another screenshot here to show you when it comes to the second shot because the second shot is often a little bit easier like for an example here now we can zoom in a little bit more and it's going to be yeah way more important for the second shot to have the correct elevation so now we are aiming up here very close to the rough line and once again, it doesn't really matter what happens with this shot. It does just matter where the ball bounces first to determine what elevation. And for the uh, the sake here, I played it one this one ten percent extra. And we're gonna see what's gonna happen. We aim there as as I explained just. We adjust the rings that we are supposed to do with the elevation extra. And then we're going to hit the ball perfect once again super important that you hit the ball perfect to determine if we're gonna land at the same spot in a video like this it goes really quick as you could notice the last video we said as well so therefore we will have to go back and we'll have to match so aiming point where did the ball bounce and this one you can see that this one looks almost identically where we did land or like where we did aim which is then we can note that down in our notebook or notepad or in the computer, or whatever. Okay, this one is 10%. That is what I do on every single shot when there is a new course. I record, I match landing position with where the ball bounces first. I know there is people trying to, you know, if you do have a crosswind, let's say, and the ball is going to end up more to the right, it doesn't really mean that you have the wrong elevation it does more or less uh, talk about the secondary bounce wind effect which is, which is a different thing in the end now with elevation the thing that we're looking for is to get the ball to bounce where we aim what happens after that is just not important in this case but that is what i do and that is something that you can start doing yourself or you can rely that me or someone else is going to bring you that information. So this is just some extra knowledge so you can understand what I do and there isn't a magical formula. It isn't really that I'm lucky. It is that I'm spending a lot of time recording my shots, going over them in detail to provide that information for you. To make it easy for you to kind of determine if this shot is uphill or it's downhill or nothing, that's, I would say, it's an easy way to do is to press the take shot button so you go into take shot mode. If then it's there now, as you can see here, that the pin is on a lower place than that the ball is where we're taking our shot from. That means that the shot is going to be downhill. If it's the other direction, like the pin were standing higher than where the position is for us, then it's played uphill. 
so it kind of changes around. You could mixture around on the screen like that, use a different position, like you can go from the other direction and zoom in completely and take a look there. And here we can also see that we're shooting to a lower position than we are at, and therefore it's going to be downhill. This is like something that you can do on some shots, some shots you cannot, but that's something to, you know, to have in mind at least, if you're gonna try to figure out the elevation yourself. So why is adjusting for elevation so important then? Like why do we even have to bother with 10% here, 20% here, uphill here, downhill here? It's for two things in my opinion. One, which is the most important thing I would say, is that when we are playing our shots, especially the drives, we sometimes have to aim very close to the rough line in some form. As an example here, uh, my plan was to bounce over to the fairway there on the right. That's not maybe a, a route that you should take, but just as an example. And here I'm going to try to aim as close to the rough line as possible to the right. Not knowing here that we do need to add or subtract to our adjustment due to elevation is going to potentially make us getting the first bounce in the rough and then we could risk going into the water or in many of the cases when it comes to the drives that you cannot really reach for the green in two. And if you play with those margins as explained here, which is very common, this is going to happen many times if you're not playing and adjusting for elevation. Doesn't matter how good you are with the ring system. And especially when you come up to a higher tour, like tour eight, tour nine, tour 10, tour 11, and tour 12, when the wind is getting stronger, that could be making a huge difference in how, how much more you will have to adjust for. And the other part I would say is, the, yeah, the second part is that we can actually make ourselves dropping way more shots from distance and also in shootouts or in regular par threes in tournament and also obviously in the golden shot by knowing here, by knowing that this one is 30% extra makes us being able to adjust uh, with a very very close line to the rough there to the left if we didn't know the 30% here We would be bouncing every single time on the fairway as we most likely would have under adjusted our shot So that is the second part that is very important. So two things w one that you make it so much easier for you when it comes to the drive You're not risking getting into the rough or into the sand if you have to aim very close to an obstacle Two, you're getting the possibility to getting a drop in a much better way and getting more drops more consistently. Like once again here in the golden shot where you do not hopefully get the castaway, but you maybe get better cards. So you might have heard that sometimes I play 20% for a shot, or maybe 30%, or maybe 10%, and you may be thinking, hmm, I'm not playing that. I'm playing maybe 10% when Tom is playing 20, or vice versa. And in that case, that is maybe hard to understand that how does that even possible? Is that even correct? Yeah, it could be. It could might well be so, and it happens, you know, every day, every time, because there isn't uh, th there isn't everyone, everyone is not playing with the same elevation adjustment. That's just how it is. But we can get the same type of outcome. And I'm going to show you by using the Clash Caddy app. This is not overlay version. I'm not using overlay as against the fair play policy. But we do have the application up here, which is a help tool that can help you uh, getting into with elevation. But I'm using this one for teaching purposes so you can see here what I'm talking about. So let's say I'm in a situation here that I'm going to play this shot 20%. I base this one as a 10 mile per hour wind and I'm going to play it minimum distance. And for those of you not familiar with this help tool, the gray column is minimum distance and we look where we find the sniper because that's the club and it says nine rings. So in this case, we're gonna play nine rings based on a 20% elevation. Then you maybe uh, look at yourself or like think about yourself. Hmm, I only play this one 5%, but I played medium distance. So then we take a look here, we take off 15%. And then you say, see medium distance. It says exactly the same thing, nine rings, because medium is the blue column. 
or like the, uh, the blue, uh, blue row or whatever we can call it. So with a 5% extra for a 10 mile per hour gives you nine rings for medium distance. But with a minimum distance adjustment with 10 mile per hour with 20% extra also gives you nine rings. And that's why you can have a different elevation adjustment because this is possible for you to mixture in whatever way you want. And it often happens on the, on the higher level of the game because you find an adjustment that works. And it doesn't really matter if you play 20 or you play 30, just that you do get the same type of outcome and you do want the ball to bounce at the spot that you intended to land. So therefore you can mixture with minimum distance, medium distance, maximum distance and with the percentages so you get what you feel comfortable with. Because often we build adjustment based on our landing position with the elevation included and then everything else is something we add like spin and uh, and stuff like that so that is the reason and i hope that helped you answer that question at least so how do you apply uh, the elevation to your game then like what can you do is it just something that you just like do automatically or yeah, what do you do? I do think there is three ways to do it. You might have a specific way, but in my book, there's three ways. First, for those of you that do know your ring adjustments already, and that's very important no matter what you're using, but especially if you're just gonna use your brain. That is very important that you do know uh, how much to adjust for without elevation. So let's pretend here that we do have a 10 in wind as an example. And then we're going to have to add 10%. We're playing downhill. And downhill means, once again, that we're going to have to add to our adjustment. So to make it as easy as possible for us, we will have to add 10% to the win. 10% to 10 uh, of 10 is one. So the thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add one to 10, and we do get 11. So the thing that happens here now is that you're going to adjust with your normal numbers for an 11 miles per hour wind instead of a 10 because we have a, a because we adjust for the elevation included in the wind. That's the easiest way to do when you're using your mind when it comes to adjusting for elevation. The second thing to do is to write it down. Now I made it very easy for us here to just put the adjustment for the sniper down here on, on a note sheet. And have in mind that a note sheet you can write however you want and whatever suits you best. So the second part is to actually write it down before you're going to play. It's something that's very, you know, easy to do before you play a specific tournament hall, as the wind is going to be the same and you know approximately what the wind is going to be. So for an example, if you play with a sniper level 10, which has 100% accuracy with a 10 mile per hour wind, 0% elevation. Then maximum distance adjustment is 9.6. If we do go down and play medium distance, uh, sorry, not medium distance, sorry, my bad. If we play for maximum distance with a 10% extra, you're gonna see that we're adding almost a ring. So 0.9, so we play maximum distance, which is 10 and a half rings. But if we go to the uphill part, then we need to subtract, as we have learned as well. And then maximum distance with a minus 10% is going to be 8.6 rings. And you can see the difference here, and the difference is going to be for all clubs if it's uphill or it's downhill or there is nothing and once again i can't stress enough how important it is to use elevation to give yourself an idea on using so go over to the third the third thing is to use one of the help tools that is out there and this is uh, an application uh, which you can download it's not for free and so it's very important that you do have that in mind. But using a calculator like this is going to make it possible for you to just press in. If you want 20% elevation, you press in the wind and it's going to help yourself um, playing better. Then you can have uh, this uh, application on your phone next beside you when you're playing. Uh, if you have a secondary device or you know you write you use the application to write down the numbers you're getting for the specific win with a specific elevation that's up to you to decide if that's something you want to do but it's out there and i wanted to include that in one of the three ways that you can uh, that you can use and adjust elevation for
So, how do we summarize this uh, guide and video then for you all? We have been going over a lot of things uh, here, trying to learn how to adjust for elevation, or at least start to adjust for elevation. Like We've been going over how to figure out how to like learn the elevation, how to figure out the percentages and stuff like that, and also why is this uh, everything like this so important. And also, can you have a different elevation for different shots? And also, how do you apply this in your game? I hope you learned something. And obviously, if you do have questions, let me know in the comment section below. The thing with this video, the thing that I was aiming for is not for you to be the master of elevation just after watching this video. For my, my goal was for you to start using elevation or at least adding something to your current way of adjusting for elevation that you might didn't know about already from the beginning. And knowing that downhill means to add, knowing that uphill means to subtract, is a knowledge that not everyone has in this game and just by knowing that you will get closer to the pin and you can then adapt you can then adjust and therefore you're gonna drop more shots and also you're going to put yourself in positions where you're not going to risk going into the rough equal amount of times as you normally do and you're also going to um uh, yeah and also when it comes to sand and stuff like that before we end this video, you can go into golfclashtommy.com and check out all the content there. There you will see all the elevation adjustment for every shot in the game. So for those of you that don't want to make the work yourself, you can check out that. There is, you know, a percentage number underneath every hold guide on the website for shot 1, shot 2 and uh, um, also shot 3 if that is necessary. Write it down or just take a copy and have that with you when you're playing. For those of you that do want to go in more in depth with elevation, you can go over to patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. There you can find different packages as you can see here on the screen where you know you have we do have the tour tech sky packages for shootouts and also for you know the regular uh, courses like all of them. Uh, so you can get the elevation there and a more in-depth explanation on how to play the courses. And also, if you do want to have training sessions with me, we do have several training session packages that you can read more about there on Patreon. You can also read more about it on the website. And then, of course, sign up and then we get going. So, once again here, thank you so much for watching this video. A short and sweet guide for how to adjust for elevation. You can skip... Um, Skip whatever part you want by using the video description down below where you can find uh, like the timestamp for the different segments in this video. Also, hit thumbs up if you enjoy it and share it with your friends so they also can learn and start using Elevation. So, now, thank you so much and good luck with your Gold Clash game.